Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about question analysis. So this is something that's really important to do as part of studying and preparing for any board exam. Today we're going to be talking about it as it applies to the ABGC exam in particular. However, this framework can be applied to any standardized exam. So we're going to talk about what is question analysis, how do we do it, why do we do it, and also, how does it fit in as far as a tool in your toolbox of strategies for studying for this exam? So question analysis, what is this? Essentially, practice questions are a really important part of taking any standardized exam, particularly the ABGC exam. And so many people know this, right? Many people know that they need to do some type of practice questions. Um, but what many people don't know is how to most effectively use these practice questions to learn from them, not only in terms of the content, but also in terms of the strategy of how to answer some of these questions. And so this is where question analysis comes in. And what I'll say is that many people, when they start to study, and they start to do practice questions, they'll sort of read through the question, read through the answer choices, pick the what they think is the correct answer. And if they got it right, then great. They feel like they knew that they know the concept and they're able to go on the, to the next question. However, I don't think this is the best way to, to go about things. Um, to most effectively utilize the questions that you're doing, I do recommend a approach that we'll talk about here. And I'm showing you a worksheet where we'll be able to walk through how I review my practice questions whenever I'm doing them, preparing for an exam, and how I actually use that to learn not only the concepts, but some of the strategies and mistakes I might be making in my own thinking as I answer these questions. And of course, that's very important when it comes to exam day, because you want to know what your strengths and weaknesses are so that you can pay extra attention, particularly to any weaknesses or gaps that you might have, both in terms of your knowledge, as well as how you go about answering questions. So this is the question template that we'll be using today. Um, essentially, you can see each row is a different question. So in our study rare sessions, we have about between 15 and 17 questions per session. And that's about how many rows we have here. Uh, this These columns are corresponding to each. So you can fill them out for each question. So for example, this first column, if you got it correct, you can just go ahead and check that box indicating that you got it correct or not. Or if you got it incorrect, you can put an X there. All right. So, And then the next thing to do would be to look and ask yourself, okay, how did I pick the answer that I did for each of these questions? For question number one, did I read the question and then the answer choices and then immediately say, aha, I know the answer, right? So, and then immediately pick that. If so, you can go ahead and check this box here. Did you use process of elimination? So did you go through as you were reading the question and the answer choices and say, okay, these, answer choices are clearly wrong and I'm going to eliminate them, right? So that's another way to go about answering questions. And then the last way we have here is just a pure guess, right? It could be you had no idea what any of the answer choices were, so you just randomly guessed one, or maybe you use some process of elimination. So you used maybe narrowed it down by one or two, and then you were stuck between two or three different options. And so you were forced to guess. So in that case, you would check guess. Uh, so that was the answer selecting strategy. How did you actually pick the answer that you did? Again, this is really important to do for both the questions that you answered correctly, as well as the ones that you did incorrectly, right? So you can, you know, it's very, I think it's very apparent that you can guess the correct answer. Of course, you can also guess the incorrect answer, right? But knowing your patterns of how you select these answers is really important to understanding how you perform on exams. So the next thing we have here is the error analysis. And these questions correspond to, again, um, 
these are questions you want to answer for yourself, whether you're getting the questions wrong or right. Right. So within this error analysis, there's different things that can go wrong, essentially, as you're reading a question and the answer choices. So was there something that you, for example, mis misunderstood or misinterpreted in the question stem? Right. If so, you want to go ahead and check this box and maybe write out what that was. Was it part of the uh, some of the key identifying features of a, a clinical presentation? What exactly was it that you misinterpreted? Or was it the the last sentence where they're asking you the question itself that was misinterpreted? Then you have errors interpreting answer choices. So as you're reading through the answer choices, was there something that sort of tripped me up, something that I didn't quite understand or that I misinterpreted? This is especially important for answer stems where you have a much longer answer and you might need to read more as you're trying to select between these different options. Was there a knowledge gap? So did I need to know, should I have known a critical piece of information that was critical for answering this question? And did I not know that? And that's why I potentially got this answer wrong. If so, you can go ahead and check that box. Um, what I'll say is that these knowledge gaps are oftentimes the easiest sort of to, to address in terms of uh, making improvements in your study approach, right? So there's very well-established methods for incorporating more knowledge, such as flashcards, spaced review, et cetera. Um, some of these other options are more difficult sometimes to address and to sort of get to the bottom of, but we'll come back to that. This next column, so this is really for any other errors that you see that tend to creep up on you, right? So there might be different, do you get distracted, for example, easily? Um, are, is there anything else that's affecting your ability to answer the question correctly and also in a timely manner? So that's this last column here. Did you run out of time? Hopefully you're doing some of these practice questions in a timed manner, right? So on average, the ABGC exam gives you about 72 seconds per question. Most standardized exams are about that, anywhere between uh, a minute to a minute and a half to answer each question. And so being able to answer the question correctly in a timely fas fashion is also really important. And then the last thing we have here are notes. So any concepts or thoughts that you had about this particular question, how you answered it, um, what kind of the mistakes you made, any patterns that you see, especially as you go along, is something that you can write in this last column. One of the nice things about having this sheet is that you can actually look at patterns or trends over time as questions, as you answer more and more questions, right? So you can see, okay, was I always directly picking the answer? And when I did, I would tend to get those questions incorrect. Or do I tend to have errors in interpreting the question stem across multiple questions? Right? So identifying, being self-aware of how you answer questions is really important for making changes if necessary. Right? So this is kind of the first step towards that. So overall, I hope that this approach is helpful to you. Uh, the second page has essentially what I just shared with you written out in terms of describing each of these different columns, the purpose of this template, some additional tips, and then we have the rare framework as well. So I mentioned at the beginning how we're going to try to tie in question analysis into a broader studying framework. And this study framework that I'm proposing here is called the rare framework. So R is for read. So reading or watching videos doing something to acquire knowledge and becoming familiar with that topic at hand. Many students have already done a lot of this by the time it comes to actually taking and studying for their board exam. So I think a lot of the preparation, especially in the, in the weeks or months leading up to the exam, should be about not only reading and watching videos, but also applying the knowledge, right? So not only acquiring but applying your knowledge to multiple choice questions on the on relevant topics, right? And so 
really important to have a source of multiple choice questions that is high quality and that will teach you in terms of how to go about answering the questions as well as the content that's on the exam too. And that's something that we offer through our course. The second R is for review. And so this is where this whole question analysis framework fits in, right? It's, it's, to, it's in the review stage. What I'll say is that most people get stuck sort of at the first R and the first A here. So they'll read and then they'll maybe do some multiple choice questions, but they will not take time to review the multiple choice questions or any relevant challenging topics to them. So that can take the form of flashcards, Anki decks, other methods of space repetition and reflection as well. And then the last, the E here is explain, explaining concept to others, right? So teaching is actually one of the best ways to learn. So if you have a study group, have a significant other, whoever it is, someone to teach and explain some of these more challenging concepts to, that can really help you gauge your understanding of how well do I actually understand this concept? Am I able to explain it to somebody in a way that makes sense? And, it, and if so, then that's probably a good indicator that you understand the concept well. Um, if not, then that's an indicator that you may need some uh, additional studying and preparation on this topic, and that's okay, right? And so that's very natural. Everybody has uh, gaps in terms of their understanding and knowledge base. Nobody's expected to go into this process of studying for an exam, knowing everything, right? Because then you wouldn't need to, to study. Uh, so I hope that this template is useful for you. If you like a copy, you can go to the StudyRare newsletter and subscribe. There'll be a link to download this sheet, both pages sent to you via email once you subscribe. So again, I hope this was useful and please let me know if you have any feedback. All right, take care.